What is up guys, this is Kirim from the Trinity of Lyft and today I'm actually finally, I guess you could say, bringing all of you guys the next episode of Path to Perfection, the sort of weekly series where I select a deck, we take a look at my main deck, extra deck and side deck choices and then we try and improve the deck as much as we possibly can over the span of three weeks. Now, of course this is going to be the second week of Performance Shadals and I do quite understand that it must have been, what, maybe two weeks since I uploaded a video. And the reason for that is just because, I, uh, just to put it simply, I guess you could say, I do have a personal life. And because of that, I was kind of busy where I couldn't produce videos um, because of either time constraints or because I just simply didn't feel like it. And if I don't feel like making videos, I feel like if I were to try and force a video out, it would of course be just awful quality. And I really don't want to give you guys bad quality videos just because of the fact that I might feel down. So of course, I just don't want to produce the videos just simply because of the fact that again, I don't want to make those bad videos. So I just wanted to make sure that I don't make another video until I did feel 100% ready to go. And of course, because I am making this video today, I am very much 100%. And again, I am trying to, I'm going to try and pop out a little bit more content um very soon again like i said in um, a few videos ago i am trying to get a couple of rogue decks to profile for all of you guys because i do understand that some of you guys might be a little bit bored of some of the more meta e decks so i'm looking to get a little bit more of those fun decks to also profile to, for you guys in the near future so just wanted to give you guys that little update um before we get into this path to perfection so without further ado let's get right into this brand new list which i've actually had a couple of weeks to test out now which well because obviously i haven't been uploading videos so that's pretty nice um there isn't too many changes with the main deck uh there is a couple significant ones and i'll just go over them when i see them so to go over the shoot we have the two beast the three skomata we have the two hedgehog the two falco and then actually we only have one dragon now uh i have cut the shadow lineup down to just straight 10 shadows because of the fact that i found this card to actually be a lot more bad than i thought it would be like it's only good in the clifford matchup really and in almost every other matchup, even in uh, against back row decks like Burning Abyss and Satellar Knights, Dragon, I end up finding myself hitting Chainable back row, which is actually really not that good because I essentially wasted a Dragon effect for our opponent to just forcefully use a back row card. So I have cut it down to one just because of the fact that I have found it to be underperforming recently. And if I end up do running into Clyforce, I have ways to put Dragon back into deck or at least use him again in multiple various different ways. So that will be it for the 10 Shadal lineup. Moving on to the perform mages, there isn't anything new with this engine. Uh, we have the 2-trick clown, the 3 damage juggler, and then of course we have the 2-hat tricker. Again, nothing special. It's the pretty standard performance Shadal, or excuse me, the performance engine in any given Shadal lineup. So of course we have those guys. Then the 3 mathematician, uh, of course, because this is Shadals, we have to have the 3 mathematician. Then we have the one glow bulb, we have the one thunder king, we have the one copy of gigabyte for being a water a free special summon. And of course just being just a fairly good utility card in, in things like the Necros matchup really. We have two effect veiler and then finally we have the one BLS to round off the monster lineup. Again, it's nothing too spectacular from the old list. It's just something, again, fairly, I guess you could say, straightforward already at this point. Moving on to the Shadal Fusions, uh, we have 3 Fusion and we have 3 L, of course, because every Shadal deck basically runs this now, so we have to have 3 of each. Then we actually have Rageki back in the main deck. I know I said I have cut Rageki in the previous list because I felt it didn't excel my plays, but... I found myself actually missing this card quite a bit um, within testing. I did test again, like I said, without the Rageki, but there were times when I could go for game, but because I didn't have the Rageki, I couldn't again push for that damage through my opponent's board, and then they would actually come back um, after I might have swung over things on their board or something, and by giving my opponent that extra turn, I have found that it has bitten me in the butt more times than I'd like to admit, so I have put the Rageki in, back in the main deck just to avoid those issues yet again. Then moving on, we have the one copy of Foolish Burial to make this any Shadol and the performance that we want. We have the one copy of Mind Control because, of course, taking our opponent's monsters and then fusing them away or overlaying with them is pretty fun. Then, of course, we also have the one Instant Fusion, which is... Uh, I also want to say that this is another reason why I did have the deck profiles postponed a little bit. Um, Megatins, man. Megatins are pretty cool. And, of course, Megatins make this card playable in almost every deck that, that can play it. So, of course, we have the one Instant Fusion to round off our spell lineup. 
Moving on to the traps, we have the one copy of Shadow Core because it's core, it's really good. We have to have one pretty much in every deck. Then we have the one bottomless and the one torrential because I feel these are pretty much the best trap cards nowadays. They're not too too bad against any specific matchup. So of course these are the two I felt like they just have actually like good real traps in the main board. So that is those real traps, quote unquote. And then finally we have the also one copy of Jar of Avarice. Now we have Jar in here for the fact that if you ever find yourself running out of this gal, you end up pretty much just auto losing. So I really wanted to have ways to put back the Nephilims back into the extra deck if I end up running through them fairly quickly. As well as within this specific extra deck, I found myself using a lot of one of fusions. So if I ever needed those one of fusions again, I did want to again have a way to put them back into the extra deck so that I may have um, access to them again. So that is the primary reason why we were at Jar of Avarice to round off our 40 card main deck. Moving on to the extra, we of course have the three copies of El Shadow Nephilim because she is the bomb diggity. So of course we have three of her. Then we also have one copy of Winda, one Shekinaga, one Anoya Tylus to have our other El Shadow monsters. I have cut Winda down to one because of the fact that even in the Burning Abyss matchup, I haven't found myself going into two at almost at all. Like, for real, my brother has Burning Abyss, and I do actually have quite a bit of testing against that deck. And... Every time I play Burning Abyss, I feel like the second window is almost irrelevant because if you do use the one window at the proper time when you should be using it, um, I guess you could say you should be auto-winning at that point. I won't say auto-winning because Burning Abyss can get around window um, decently enough, but even though if you use window wisely, you really shouldn't need the second one. And again, that is why I decided to cut one of the windows um, just strictly due to the fact that I felt that the second window was not that good as well as also for space constraints. So of course we have these El Shadals. And then, of course, because we have that one institution, we have the one copy of Elder God, or excuse me, Elder Entity Norden. I almost said Elder God Norden for a second because that isn't the TCG name. But yes, we have the one copy of Norden, of course, to go with our instant fusion card. And albeit Norden is a fantastic card by himself, I felt that multiple Nordens wasn't necessary because of the fact that, one, this extra deck space is already fairly tight as is, and trying to fit multiple Nordens into it is going to be extremely difficult, especially for me. Also, the fact that Instant Fusion does burn you for a thousand life every time you use it. I felt that um, in conjunction with Trick Long, you might end up burning yourself too much, in my opinion. So I did want to cut that um, life point payments down as much as I possibly could. Uh, excuse me. I wanted to cut them down as much as I possibly could. So I felt again that the one instant fusion was just a happy medium for me. I didn't again want to run multiples because of um, space constraints and that life point issue. Also, another thing is that Noden is a water, um, so you can actually make. Um, let's see if I can grab it real quick. You can actually make this gal with Noden, so that's also pretty pretty cool. So that will round off our fusion monsters. Uh, moving on to the um, synchros, I only do run two. I have the one copy of Trishula and then the one copy of Naturia Beast. Now, Trishula is self-explanatory. I really shouldn't have to go over it. Trishula is too good. And I have that base in here because I do run that glow bulb. And there's actually a two-card combo with Mathematician and Hat Tricker in hand where you can actually make the Nat Beast first turn. So that's also pretty cool. And I felt just because of how, I guess you could say, degenerate Nat Beast is nowadays with how powerful it can be against almost every single deck... I felt that just having a way to make Nat Beast is also really, really helpful and really strong in the sense that you can just go up almost against any of those top um, spell-based meta decks and just have an instant sort of gin lock of old. So, of course, we have the Nat Beast for all of that. Then moving on to the rank, or not assuming the rank 4s, because there's actually more than just rank 4s now in the XZ's lineup. We go into our Evil Storm Exiton Knight for General Board Nuking. Our Castell for simple removal. We have the one copy of Dweller because we do not like Burning Abyss and the Mirror Match all that much. So, of course, having a way to just stop their plays is really helpful. We have the one copy of Trapeze Magician because he is extremely good. Like, the more I use Trapeze Magician, the more I realize how darn broken he is. Like, for real. This card, if your deck can make him, you should make him because he's so good. Uh, then we have the one copy of King of the Feral Imps, of course, to search out our Gigabyte. And then finally, we actually do have a rank 8, miraculously enough, in the one copy of Divine Dragonite Felgrand. Now, to go over why I have Felgrand in this deck, I have Felgrand in here for the fact that it was in the theory that it's kind of like Downward Magician and Dante. 
as the main reason why Burning Abyss players make a downer over their Dante is because of the fact that Dante is still susceptible to things like Phoenix Wing Wing Blast and Karma Cut, just to name some cards in the mirror match, as well as he's also weak to things like BLS, which can be dropped every so often. So, because of that fact, Burning Abyss players like to make downer magician over Dante whenever they possibly can, because of the fact that no matter what you do to that downer magician, you will be getting the Dante effect. So, kind of in that aspect, I have put Felgren in here, because of the fact that I have found myself going into two Nephilims at once, at multiple times in testing, and I have thought that they were fairly susceptible to back row hate, i.e. things like Mirror Force, and again, any of the Burning Abyss back row, and just a lot of removal things in general. Also, they were susceptible to Trishula, of course. So, I wanted to have a way to be able to stick for damage with two Nephilims, but then have a way to get them t technically off board, so that I could have some sort of protection for them, and also have another big, big monster to just go over them. So, of course, Felgran was that guy, because of the fact that we can use this to make um, over two Nephilims, and then having the Felgran to either protect itself with its own effect, or be a, basically a walking breakthrough skill, is just, in my opinion, it's just actually really, really cool, and I just wanted to have the Felgran in here for those situations. So, that will be it for the extra deck. Moving on to the side deck, um, probably this is the this is the thing that I feel the deck needs to help with most, as I feel my side decks are only... Oh, actually, excuse me, I forgot something really quick. Yusei Token. Never forget the Yusei Token, how dare I. Um, again, back to, back to what I was saying about the side deck. I feel like the side deck is meh. Like, I would like the most critiquing on this side deck because of the fact that every time I make a side deck, I always feel like it could be better. So, again, this is kind of a preliminary side deck. So, of course, give me your thoughts down in the comments section below. So, of course, we start with the two Retaliating C because this card is so good against Necros and the Mirror Match. So, of course, we have them. Then, of course, we have the two Maxis to accompany the Flying C. Then, we have the one copy of Kaiku for things like Infernoids as well as, against still Necros. We have the second copy of Gigabyte because Necros would usually be wanting to make you go first. Um, if you do win the first round, or it doesn't really matter because in game two, Necros will be trying to make you go first. So you really actually want to try and draw into Gigabyte rather than search it. So we cited the second copy again so we can have the better chance of search. Actually, not searching, um, drawing it, excuse me. And then, of course, we have the one copy of Ghost Ogre because I hate Clyfort. I hate that deck, I swear to God. Hate Clyfort, so of course, we have the Ghost Ogre to round off our monsters in the side deck. Then moving on to the single spell that I do cite in, I cited the one copy of Dark Hole. I would try and cite it too, but for space constraints, I couldn't find the, um, the the slot for a second copy, but so for now, I do have the one copy of Dark Hole in the side deck. Moving on to the traps, we have our two copies of Breakthrough Scale for extra effect negation. We have the two Decree, because I do not have Denko yet, which is kind of sad, as I would probably run Denko over Decree, but even though for now, I do like that Decree can stop some decks, because again, most decks are not maining MST, so having the Decree actually to just be a, a um, I guess you could say, slightly harder of a card to out, then Denko at times is really nice. And then, of course, to round this off, oh, if I don't drop it, we have the three copies of Fairwind, because again, like I said, I hate Clyfort. So that will be it for the side deck. Alright guys, so I hope you all did indeed enjoy this brand new episode of Path to Perfection. I will be trying to get the third week of this deck out in time. Again, I will say that I will try. I cannot guarantee it, sadly. But I definitely will do my darndest to get this third and final episode for this deck out in time. So again, I hope you all did enjoy. Again, make sure to leave any comments, questions, um, suggestions, and or concerns down in the comments section below. As I always do read... Almost all, or excuse me, I do actually read all the comments. There's just some that I choose not to reply to. So, yeah, make sure to leave all your thoughts down in the comment section below. I hope you all did enjoy this video. And as always, this is Kirim from the Trinity of Lyft. And I'll see all of you guys later. Peace out.